Imagine spawning in a world, but instead of having wildlife and beautiful scenery, you have to survive 100 days on one regenerating block. There's one issue. The one block is a living entity. Hello there. Depending on his mood, you can receive great rewards or you could receive terrible consequences. On day one, I spawned on the one block. I began mining and noticed I was in the starter age. Hello, my bald friend. Welcome to the starter age. As you progress to the different ages, your hair will slow return. Uh, okay, I guess this block can also talk. After a rather weird first interaction with the one block, I continued mining to expand my island. Okay, flowers and fences, that's not that good. I continued digging and met my first pig friend. I also found another chest with some more flowers. Yeah, that's not that useful. The one block was starting to get a little bit crowded, so I decided to expand it a little bit. Nearing the end of day one, I found some enchanted books. Not a bad way to end off the night. Day two was pretty standard. I spent it mining for more materials to expand the one block. Also, a lot more animals started spawning too. On day three, it was an ordinary day. I continued mining the one block and I entered the Iron Age. Welcome to the Iron Age, my bald friend. If you can complete this challenge, you'll receive a reward. Although if you fail, you'll die forever. I think I'll pass on that for now, one block. Trying to mitigate any risk, I decided to decline one block's challenge. Suddenly, I was teleported. Ah, painful, you made it. This is the water bucket challenge. Starting from five blocks high, ranging to a thousand blocks high. Good luck, see ya. Without any hesitation, I grabbed the water bucket from the chest and began my first five block jump. All right, well that one was easy enough. I was then teleported to the 100 block water bucket challenge. Here goes nothing guys, let's go. I took the leap and with the correct timing, I was able to survive. Okay, that was a little bit harder. I was then teleported to the final challenge, the 1000 block high water bucket fall. Okay, here we go. Knowing I'd be heavily rewarded if I survived the jump, I knew I had to make it. Oh my gosh, okay, we actually lived at one block. I was then teleported back to my one block. Okay, I'm alive, I'm back in my base, one block. I know this might be a sensitive time for you, as you did just nearly die. But I must say, you looked like a bald eagle when you were soaring through the sky. You are a handful, one block. Now, where's my reward? Here you go. Hair waterer. Um, what is this? You gotta be kidding me, one block. You're telling me I risked my life for a hair waterer? Oh, okay, now you're just gonna disappear on me, okay. As I am bald, I did decide to use the hair waterer and go to sleep for the night. In the morning of day six, I didn't notice any changes to my hair, but I decided to expand the one block, adding a wheat farm and a tree farm. In the morning of day seven, I noticed I had some stubble growing on my head. I was no longer bald. And speaking of bald, as I continued mining the one block, I was attacked by a group of bald zombies. Yeah, that is something I had never seen before. Just like normal zombies, they were fairly easy to take down. Baldful, as you are in the Iron Age and you defeated the bald zombies, here's a reward. As you can see, one block ended up giving me four iron golem spawners. We'll need to put those to use sometime. As we are in the Iron Age, I decided to spend the next couple days mining to get full iron armor. Yep, 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 yep. And now that I got all my gear, I figured it's time to upgrade this island. It's looking a little bit trash, if you ask me. So without further ado, let's get busy. The first and most important thing I did was began creating my wheat farm. Of course, we'd never survive without a permanent food source. I also harvested some of my trees and expanded the tree farm. If you ask me, this island isn't starting to look too bad after all. As you guys can see, the one block is looking a little bit better now, but I still still don't have a base, so I was thinking of creating something over here, potentially. I'm just gonna go with the flow. I don't really have a plan of what it's gonna look like, but here goes nothing. The first thing I like to do whenever I'm building anything is just make the outline. It'll make the building process a lot easier. This tree farm I made is really coming in handy as well, because I am using a lot of wood for this build. As you guys can see, I have these cool wooden pillars, and I connected them to make archways. Well, I think I did a decent job. I didn't really have any direction where I was going, but I pretty much got the outline of the base. I just gotta figure out what we're gonna fill in the floors with as well. But on that note, I think we'll continue building this throughout the video, but now it's time to get some harvesting done and then go to bed for the night. After harvesting all my crops, I went to bed, and on day 15, I continued mining my one block when a cute little white cat appeared. Aw, it's so cute. Okay, I'm gonna get you sorted with some food, but first, I think I should probably build you a home because it's not very safe for her to be wandering around. Building this innocent cat a home quickly became my number one priority. I quickly expanded out the island, added a few more archways, and secured the area. I then spent the remainder of the day doing as much fishing as I could. I wanted to make sure this cat was well fed. Okay, little girl, follow me. 
me. I actually have made a nice little home for you. So yeah, let's go check it out. As you can see, the cute little cat followed me all the way over to her brand new home. Upon entry, you got some hay bales on the right, a nice little wool area to sleep on, and I also set up some dispensers so she can get food whenever she needs. I think it's safe to say she likes it. So this is gonna be your new home, and by the way, guys, I've decided to name her Breadloaf. Yeah, she looks very cute and looks like a little piece of bread, so why not name her Breadloaf? I hope you enjoy your new home, and I will see you around. Now that Breadloaf is all situated and comfortable, I decided to expand out another part of the one block and start creating my dark room. This is gonna be used so that a bunch of mobs spawn in this dark area, and I'm gonna be able to get a bunch of experience. Okay, guys, and after AFKing here for the rest of the day, look at this. As you guys can see, the dark room is actually working, and it seems to be filled with a bunch of mobs. Now I can easily just one-hit them because I built it 21 blocks high, so they're all pretty much 1 HP, so this is a nice, easy source of experience, and eventually when I build my enchanting room, I'll be able to get a bunch of really good enchants. Let's go. And I think the final thing we need to do is now that the dark room is actually built, we actually need to make this a room because obviously I could quite literally fall down to my death at any point, so I think it'd be a good idea if we built some walls around this, so let's do it. Also, my goal is to reach 1 million subscribers this year, so if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe. I then created a couple more archways, connected them, and added some glass around the edges. As you guys can see, we've made quite a lot of progress on the one block so far, but this is pretty depressing if you have to ask me. So my next objective for the next four days is going to be heavily expanding this farm and creating some new farms as well, because I do have some carrots and some other materials in my chest, so I might as well put them to use. And another issue I'm having is just take a look at my animal farm. Um, yeah, let's not worry about him, but yeah, as you guys can see, there's quite a big problem here. There is almost no room for any of my animals here, so I think it'd be probably a good idea if I build some sort of home for these guys as well, but who knows if I have enough time for that. But let's go ahead and get started on creating a bigger tree farm and a lot more farms around here because this is just depressing. I decided to build one farm that would wrap around the dark room, and on the opposing side, I decided to build a wheat farm that would wrap around Breadloaf's home. As I felt pretty bad that animals were pretty claustrophobic, I decided to build a little stable for them. As you can see, I stuck with the similar archway pattern, put some windows around, and it was all complete. Okay, now that all my animals have a home, I think I should probably continue mining my one block because we need to continue through the ages if we're gonna get better gear. Anyways, let's begin. After mining the one block, I finally entered the nether age. Okay, it looks like we have finally made it to the nether age, and by the looks of it, as we keep breaking the blocks, every- okay, yep, this is definitely the nether age. I've got to be very careful because... Oh, God, wait. Is he going to burn down my entire thing? Hopefully, he doesn't end up burning down my entire thing. I don't see any flames anywhere. But as you can see, the loot pool switched. It is now all nether supplies, which means we are going to be able to get potion supplies and a bunch of other goodies. I continued mining and suddenly... Uh, where the heck even am I? Ah, painful. You've arrived. Welcome to your next challenge. Okay, well, uh, here goes nothing, I guess. Okay. Oh, and one more thing. If you fall, you die forever. See ya. Okay, guys. Well, that does not leave me very comfortable at all. There's literally lava all around me, but hopefully we can make it through this in one piece. Okay, I just jump onto this and get onto this one. Okay, that's good. Let's go over here. And okay, this is a little bit sketchy, but we should be able to make it. Come on. Okay, there we go. I think we're coming a bit closer to the end. We just got to make this one jump here and onto the chest. Okay, now we just line this one up. Okay, I think we're nearing the end. Just gotta make over this. Okay, last jump, go. Oh my gosh, that was close. I was then teleported back to my one block. Good job. I'm surprised you lived that one. Interested to see if you can survive what I have planned next. Wait, so you're telling me that one block literally just disappeared? Like, I didn't even get any reward for that. Like, wait a second. I have a beacon and an enchanted golden apple in my inventory. Uh, one block, wherever you are, thank you very much. Even though you just about killed me, I appreciate it. And for the remainder of day 26, I went ahead and mined the one block to get a bunch of nether supplies. Well, I guess the good thing about the nether age is I got a bunch of brewing supplies. We'll have to build some sort of brewing station soon. But before we go to bed, let's go ahead and water our hairline and we'll go to bed for the night. And as you can see, the hair waterer seems
seems to be working. Although I do have a giant bald spot in the middle of my head. Other than that, it seems to be good. I then made another expansion to the island and started working on creating my auto brewer. This is going to be able to brew all my potions automatically. And I'm not going to lie, I had to watch a tutorial. It's been a while since I built one of these. And this is what it looks like before... And this is what it looks like after. Now, of course, guys, we still haven't put in the walls, but oh my gosh, I definitely lost a little bit of brain cells building these auto brewers. But the good thing is now I don't have to brew any of the potions. It'll just automatically brew everything, and I'll show you guys how it's all done in a little bit. But now it's time to put up the walls. After losing what little brain cells I had left, I started putting up the walls around the auto brewers. I also stuck to the archway design because I felt like it looked really cool. All right, now that all the auto brewers are done, let's go check on Breadloaf and see how she's doing. Oh my gosh, Breadloaf, you've grown quite a bit. It looks like all those fish are working wonders. They are yummy. I want somewhere to play. It's a little boring around here by myself. I'll see what I can do about that, Breadloaf. In the meantime, keep eating your food and drinking lots of water. Okay, well, I wonder what Breadloaf is going to look like when she's full size, because that is a big difference. It almost looks like it's a new cat. I then continued mining the one block, and a giant elephant spawned beside me. Yeah, that's kind of strange. I wasn't too sure what to do at this point, but after grabbing some wheat, I was able to lead it into the stables, where it's going to live for now. I then spent the remainder day 33 harvesting and replanting all of the wheat yeah there's quite a lot i then spent another day mining the one block getting a bunch of materials so i can continue working on expanding my island now that I had enough materials, I expanded the island, and as you can see, we have the auto brewers directly next to what's gonna be the auto farms. As you guys can see, I built my automatic potato farm. So let's quickly plant some potatoes, and I'll show you guys how it works. So this is all the potatoes I have to my name. I know, I'm pretty poor. Basically how it works is as soon as I click this button, it'll release all the water from the dispensers, and it'll harvest all of my crops, and it'll bring all the crops back into this chest. So it's pretty cool. Now I'm just gonna build another one of these on the opposite side. After completing the second auto farm, I continued mining the one block and I entered the diamond age. All of a sudden, I got teleported again. Oh no, where am I this time? Baldful, welcome to your next challenge. The water will rise every 10 seconds. Find the button or you'll drown. See ya. After one block disappeared, all of a sudden, the water started rising out of nowhere. Okay, this is not good. Don't panic. Try to find the button. It's gotta be in one of these houses, maybe? As you can see, the water has been rising very fast. It has already completely deleted all of the houses in the surrounding area. As I started running out of air, I started taking some damage. Luckily, I was still able to catch some breath. But I knew I didn't have much time as the water was rising very fast. Okay, the button's gotta be at the bottom somewhere. Let's catch one last breath. It doesn't look like I'm gonna get much more. Now being completely submerged in water, I knew I had no more time to waste. Okay, come on. It's gotta be on the floor somewhere around here in one of these holes, maybe? And just before I drowned, I clicked the button and it suddenly disappeared and I was teleported back to my one block. Okay, one block. That was way too close. You made it back? Congratulations on surviving that challenge. Here's your reward. Um, what is this? Oh my gosh, thank you. Also, I forgot to mention, you can call in for favors. If you need something, just ask. Just remember some favors may have consequences. Okay, a favor might come in handy one day. I then went ahead and watered my hairline and went to sleep for the night. And when I woke up in the morning, I had a full head of hair. I was no longer bald. One like equals one more hair on my head. I then began working on the middle of my one block. As you guys see, I'm now finishing the pathway and filling in some of the open void. After completing most of my pathway, I started mining the one block and suddenly it said monster party. What does that even mean? Okay, what the heck? I did not expect that. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Hopefully they don't have too much health. As you can see, these creatures did quite a lot of damage and without having any potions, I had to be very careful. Another issue I realized is my boots had just broken, so now I was even weaker. I tried pillaring up, but they shot me with some sort of poison, which knocked me down. After nearly dying to these weird-looking creatures, I was finally able to take them down. Okay, one more. There we go. Just when I thought everything was back to normal, a bunch of these netherite golems spawned on me. Subscribe to me for good luck, please. I need good luck right now. And after a few more hits, I was able to take down the remaining netherite golem. Okay, that's gotta be the last of them, right? 
Throughout the remainder of the day, I had some weird looking demon golem spawn on top of me, as well as some lions. Yeah, hopefully this monster party ends soon, because I don't know how much longer I can take this. And as you guys can see, after a few more hits, I was able to take down the final lion. After making myself some full diamond armor, I then went ahead and mined the one block for the remainder of the day. It looked like the monster party was now over. <laughs> Just when I thought the monster party was over, I noticed Breadloaf was being targeted. Breadloaf, get out of there. I'll take care of them. Now that Breadloaf was safe, I went ahead and started taking down each one of these mobs one by one. And with one last hit, I defeated that weird looking zombie and defeated the final nether wolf. Okay, Breadloaf, I think that's the last of them. I'm going to grab a golden apple for you just in case of an emergency. Just wait here. I then grabbed the golden apple that one block gave me earlier and gave it to Breadloaf. Okay, thanks. Okay, that was a close one. Hopefully no more of these monsters spawn. I've got to keep a close eye on Breadloaf. Now, I think the one block that we've made so far does look pretty good, but it is a little bit plain. So I think for the next few days, I want to do some decorating. This is what the one block looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. It's pretty cool what you can do by just adding leaves. It adds a whole lot of character to this one block. I then went ahead and began harvesting my entire tree farm. And after harvesting that, I expanded all the potato and carrots. After harvesting and expanding some of my farms, I then went ahead and connected all of the archways. I think this looks a lot better now. After the archways were connected, I went ahead and added some roofs. Okay, I think adding the roofs on top was a really good touch. Now the next thing I want to do is potentially build some sort of cobblestone generator. That way I can have a bunch more blocks. And I also just realized we built these auto brews quite a while ago and we haven't brewed any potions. So I think the next step, we make our cobblestone generator and brew up a bunch of potions. As you can see, I then began working on making the platform where my cobblestone generator will be. And while I'm building the cobblestone generator, if you haven't already, make sure you follow me on Instagram for exclusive exclusive updates on upcoming videos. I'm not sure if this is the most efficient farm. If you know any better techniques, comment down below. But as you can see, as I mine the stone, it all falls down into these hoppers leading into the chest. So it's a pretty nice way to get a bunch of cobblestone and I can merge it all into stone if I really feel like it. But now that I have an unlimited amount of cobblestone, I think it's time we brew up some potions over by the auto brewers. Before we get started on brewing potions, I wanted to go ahead and spend the rest of the day putting good use to my cobblestone generator. After spending the entire day, getting a bunch of cobblestone, I then started gathering a bunch of nether wart, which I'll need for my brewing. Not sure if it's just me, but I find time lapses so satisfying. Okay, so as you guys can see here, I am at the auto brewers, and how this works is basically I have all the materials that I need to make my potions. Now all I gotta do is fill it up with water bottles. So what I'm gonna do is collect a bunch of water from here, fill up a bunch of these chests, and then turn on the auto brewer, and it's gonna start auto making all my potions. So without further ado, let's get started. You guys don't understand the amount of right clicks I needed to do to fill up all of these chests, so definitely leave a like for my fingers. Okay guys, and after messing with the redstone a little bit, I fixed them. As you guys saw in the replay mod, it worked for like a second and then it would stop, but now it's going to continuously start working, and after it's being brewed, it pushes it down to the next one, and as you guys can see at the bottom, we finally have some strength potions. So we're gonna have a bunch of different potions. We got strength, we got speed, we have a bunch of insta health, and finally in the last one, we got a bunch more insta health, because you can never have enough. But now that we have the auto brewers working, we have a bunch of potions, what I would actually like to do is to start expanding my island. The idea that I had was instead of making an island above this island, what if I made an island underneath this island? So I think I'm gonna have to call in for a favor from the one block. Hey, one block, are you there? Okay, there you are. I'm here to call in for that favor. I want to expand my one block and was wondering if you could help me. Consider it done. The one block opened the fence gate and then swan-tawned off the island. Okay, guys, the one block jumped off. I don't know where he... Oh, there... Wait, is that... Oh, that is the one block. Okay, so it looks like he is gonna be helping us build. Okay, the only thing is, is how am I gonna get down to the one... Oh, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna be jumping down... Okay, that was a little bit scary. Okay, well, now I guess we need to get to building. After gathering a bunch of cobblestone from my cobblestone generator, the one block and I quickly made a platform and filled the entire thing in. Hopefully my finger doesn't break off from right-clicking so much. After we finished the platform, I went ahead and watered my hairline again and then went to bed for the night. I never thought I'd have this much hair. This is pretty awesome. After admiring all the hair I had on my head, I went ahead and gathered a bunch of potions. Let's get a hashtag hairful in the comments. After gathering some more potions, I continued mining the one block and entered the desert age. Little did I know moments later, I'd be teleported by the one block. Where 
Where am I? Remember how I said there'd be consequences if you asked for favors? Well, here's your first consequence. Uh, what do you mean first consequence? Um, what the heck is that? Okay, that is a pharaoh. Little did I know one block sent me back to ancient Egypt to fight a pharaoh. After drinking my strength and speed potions, I went in for a couple hits and he almost one-shot me. This pharaoh does a ton of damage. I swung and got a couple more hits on the pharaoh and blocked a big attack from him. With only four potions left to my name, I went in for a few more hits and did quite a lot of damage. As the fight continued, I got pushed back and fell into a pool of water. Okay, this is not good. He's doing a lot of damage. This is all or nothing. And with one final attack, I was able to take down the pharaoh and his minions. I was then teleported back to my one block. Okay, one block, that was not cool. I better get some sort of reward. Your consequences will only get harder, so be careful of which favors you ask for. Here's your reward. Extreme hair waterer? What in the world is that gonna do to my hair? I am not excited to try that out, but uh, thanks, I guess, one block? This is very cursed. Do you guys think I forgot about Breadloaf? We are gonna be building Breadloaf, an awesome playground, using this space that we've made down here. Now, keep in mind, this entire space is not gonna be a playground, but we can definitely make something pretty cool, maybe in this corner over here. So, needlessly to say, I think Breadloaf is gonna be pretty happy. And what's the number one important thing? That would be safety. So, I think I'm gonna have to head over to my tree farm, get a bunch of wood, and add some fences to go around this entire area. Yeah, this is gonna be a while. And while I'm harvesting my tree farm, I just wanted to say we're coming so close to 1 million subscribers, so thank you. After replanting my tree farm and adding defenses around the one block, it was time to build the playground for Breadloaf. Surprisingly, one block came and helped out for a bit too. Once the parkour to the pool was made, I then went ahead and built a new home for Breadloaf. Hey, I think I did a pretty good job on this build. Okay, now that the playground is down, let's go ahead and show Breadloaf. Oh my gosh, Breadloaf, you are massive now. These fish have a lot of protein. I've built you an awesome playground. Come check it out. I then led Breadloaf all the way down to her brand new playground. Wow, this is insane! Well, it's safe to say Breadloaf definitely likes her playground. Hopefully she doesn't get too much bigger, though. I'm not sure how I'm gonna keep her fed. I then went ahead and mined the one block for the rest of the day to gather a bunch more materials. As you guys saw, that magma cube kind of blew up everything. But I opened this chest, and look at this. There's a Fire Aspect 2 book. That is going to come in handy. I wonder what other enchants I'm gonna be able to get from this. And as it is getting pretty late, I figured it's time to water our hair with the extreme hair waterer. So let's go take off our helmet do a couple splashes of that and let's see what our hair looks like in the morning the very next morning as you can see the hair is growing down my face and turning into a mullet please don't comment hashtag mullet full just don't do it after growing a mullet overnight i continued mining the one block took down this blaze and entered the enchantment age ah you made it to the enchanting phase as most of my challenges have caused harm, here's a reward for making it this far. Um, what is this? Four Enderman spawners? Okay, this is pretty awesome. One block might not be so evil after all. Thank you. And he's gone. Okay, this this is just weird, okay? I, I didn't expect my video to get like this. Like, first off, I have a mullet, I have extreme hair waterers, and now I have a bunch of Enderman spawners. All right, this is kind of weird. Now that we're in the enchanting phase, I figured I should mine this block and see what kind of new materials I'm able to get. Also, what I'd like to do is make some sort of expansion and build our Enderman spawner place. I'm not exactly sure where I should do it. I think, honestly, I might just utilize some of the space that we have down here. I then went ahead and spent the remainder of the day mining the one block to get a bunch more supplies. As Endermans don't naturally spawn here, I wasn't able to build the normal Enderman grinder, but I made use of the materials I had, set up some trees that were three blocks high. That way, no Endermans could hit me. As you can see, our base looks pretty good so far. We've got this beautiful farm with all of our animals. We got this huge tree farm and nether wart farm we've also built the dark room we have our auto brewer set up here with an automatic farm beside it and of course we have bread loaf jumping in our pool and to end it all off we have the end farm the next project i wanted to do was quickly go ahead and build a nice little area to make an enchantment room yeah i figured it's about time we get some enchants this is what the room looked like before and this is what it looks like after now that my enchantment room was made i was able to utilize the dark room and get fully enchanted armor now that i've completed enchanting on my armor. As you guys can see, the enchants were kind of mediocre, but it wasn't too bad. Now I want to go ahead and mine the one block for the rest of this day, get a bunch of supplies, and finish off building the glass around these areas here. So just like that, I spent the remainder of the
the day getting as much materials as I could. And if you made it this far in the video, just know I appreciate each and every one of you. I put a lot of effort into making this content, and I really hope I can inspire and brighten up some of your days. Well, I'm not gonna lie, this place looks a lot better now, with the glass being fully done up, and the roof is now finished here as well. Now I think it's time to harvest all of my crops. As I'm harvesting these crops, I've kind of just been thinking to myself, I'm probably not even gonna go ahead and replant any of these, as I do already have the automated crop farms over there, so I kind of should just get rid of this stuff. If you have any suggestions what I should build instead of the wheat farm there, comment it down below. Now that I was fully enchanted, I was comfortable enough to continue mining the one block. As I continued mining, I entered the boss age. As I looked around, I saw Zeus, god of the sky, spawn in front of me. He does not look very happy. One block, it's about time I call in for another favor. How may I assist you? There's a literal god over there trying to kill me, and he seems a little bit too powerful for me. Is there anything you can give me to assist in killing Zeus? This should do the trick. Good luck. Um, what is this? Extreme knockback stick? Uh, okay, thanks, one block. I guess I'll see you around. Okay, well, hopefully this knockback stick works because, wait, is he, is he really strong? Uh, yeah, he has, like, a lot of health. Okay, knockback. <gasps> Oh my gosh. As you can see, as soon as we knocked him off, he immediately died. Okay, so we've just defeated Zeus. Is that the only boss I'm gonna have to deal with? I sure hope so. Uh, what in the world is that? Is that Albino King Kong? Okay, that is not good. We have got to get rid of him fast. I don't know how, but he is hitting me from all the way over there. This is extremely cursed. Hey, one block, can I get another favor? If you don't mind, can you break the fences behind him? Because I literally cannot get rid of this thing. Oh, wait, is that one block? Okay, that's one block. As I requested, one block came to the rescue, breaking all the fences behind him. Hey, well, here goes nothing. Let's go. Okay, wait, I think we killed him. Okay, so Albino Kong is down, Zeus is down, surely there's not gonna be any more bosses, right? I think we should probably go to bed for the night. Just when I thought everything was back to normal, I saw another boss standing on top of my roof. It was Illidan from my Demon Only World video. When I went to go hit him, he charged through me. I then lined up a nice angle and knocked Illidan all the way off the map. That was easy. Well, I guess the boss phase isn't the worst. As you guys can see, I got some totems of undying, which will come in handy if I ever do end up getting close to dying. And as it is nighttime, another boss spawned, and it seemed to be Apollo from my Ancient Rome video. Once I built all the way up, I got a nice angle and launched Apollo all the way into the void. See ya! After defeating all the bosses that spawned on me, I then began mining the one block again, and I entered the end phase. Being in a new phase, I took this opportunity to mine the one block to get a bunch of new materials. As you can see, my armor is not in any good condition, and as it is the end phase, it dropped the best armor in the game, and now I just need to go enchant it. And wait a second, is that like an end portal over there? How in the world did this get here? Welcome to the end phase, Painful. As you can see, an end portal has opened up. Once you go through the portal, you cannot come back until whatever is on the other side waiting for you has been defeated. Okay, that sounds a little bit intimidating, I'm not gonna lie. We should likely enchant our new armor, and we should probably grab some potions, because it sounds like there's something waiting to fight. And after a couple days of enchanting, as you guys can see, I got some decent enchants, half of it anyways, and now it's time to grab some potions, and I think I'm ready to defeat whatever's on the other side of this end portal. I'm assuming it's gonna be an ender dragon, right? Preparing for battle, I grabbed a bunch of potions and headed into the end. Upon entering the end, there was a mecha dragon waiting for me. I decided to pop my speed and strength potions and begin this fight. I began the fight by shooting him with an arrow and it launched a ton of missiles at me. Okay, we gotta be careful of those missiles. That actually does quite a lot of damage. Suddenly, the dragon stopped moving and started firing a lot more missiles at me. As you guys can see, this mecha dragon also drops bombs. Note to self, don't step on any more bombs. After barely surviving another barrage of missiles, I went ahead, grabbed some more potions, and took one final shot to eliminate the mecha dragon. Okay, that was a close one. I was then teleported back to my one block. Welcome back home. Since you completed each challenge as promised, you now have a full head of hair. On top of that, here's five pig spawners, five sheep spawners, and five chicken spawners. Okay, what in the world? Okay, these will actually come in handy. Thank you very much, one block. Even though you nearly killed me a few times, I appreciate all the gifts. And did one block said I have a full head of hair now? Hold on, how long it... 
Oh my gosh. It's been a little while since we checked on Breadloaf. We should probably go see how she's doing. Oh my goodness, Breadloaf. What have you been eating? I really like food. Finalizing day 100, Breadloaf and I watched the sunset. And of course, if you made it this far, comment hashtag painful army so I know you're a real one. See ya.